Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Big hello to you new subscribers, thanks for joining us. Alright, so we're going to get back on this 1988 three-cylinder VRO two-stroke 70 horsepower Mercury. We got bonnets to get sanded down and a little bit of cosmetic work, a little painting and priming. We got tilt switch up and down electric stuff to get doing and uh, I cheat a little bit on these Mercs when it comes to these tilt units. Um, but it ain't really a Merc tilt unit. It's an E-Tech tilt unit. So I guess I'm not cheating when I really think about it. But anyway, uh, we're going to get back on that. But before we do, i got to share something with you folks from a subscriber. He said, please then find and close a small token of my appreciation and so forth. He said, this is the official flag of the Royal St. Lawrence Yacht Club. Founded in Montreal province of Quebec 133 years ago, making it one of North America's oldest yacht clubs. And uh, he went on to tell me that he, he sent me this flag and um, I could display it in my shop or maybe on my boat. Well, I'm going to do it right here in the shop for right now. And uh, so I want to say a big thank you. And that goes out to a Mr. Daniel Roberts, who is right over there. He's right over there. He's my neighbor. Right over there, across the line in Canada. So, thank you so much. Um, very humbling and much appreciated. And I will get it up here better as soon as I clean up this mess behind me. And that is on the to-do list. So, let's take a look at it. Hello. Things all flopping around. That ain't what I want you to look at. That's what I want you to look at. There it is. From the Royal St. Lawrence Yacht Club. And uh, that's a really pretty banner there. And uh, I'll get it properly displayed. But thank you so very much. And... Uh, I hope to get more of that kind of thing and clean up my area around here. Clean up my act! And uh, get those posted really nice. So, let's get started on a Mercury. Okay, here's my three position switch. I'll show you that in a bit, but the main thing I'm doing right now is just soldering. I got a little fluxy stuff here. That I rub on there and then I'm soldering these male female connectors here together but I just want to get a good coat on there now what you're looking at there is just my uh, portable power pack 12 volt jump pack and if you can see there I've got it hooked to the regular positive and negative wires that would go to your battery. So just pretend that's the back of your boat or whatever and that's your hot and your negative wire going to your battery. That's what I got set up there. And after a little soldering on the switch and so forth, what I mean by I cheat a little bit on hooking these switches up and so forth is uh, well, Mercury has its own solenoid system right there, and uh, I can figure all that out, but I'm just so used to messing with the Evinrude stuff that I like to go out to one of my dead motors or tilt units or whatever in the, in the pile out there, and I always have a, a lot of these, and it's this here. It just makes it so much easier. If you look at it, I just take the two wires that come out that are green and blue and hook to the motor 
the tilt trim motor of the unit and again this is an OMC motor on here so it only it makes it easier if I use the OMC box with the two relays right in there but I just got my green wire and blue wire with the quick connects here so I can route this anywhere I want this way up through the back or around the other side or whatever so there's your two motor wires that go to the tilt motor and then I use the original um, hot negative that's going to go to the battery in the boat. And then I just come up here, and this is the, the quickest and simplest way I've found to do this. And then I just take the hot wires coming out of the back of this box. There they are. They come right out of the back of the box. And of course you're going to have one for each motor, so to speak. And you splice them into one connector and hook it to the hot. This is my hot wire coming in from the battery. It goes right to the solenoid for the starter. So that we know that's hot. I mean there it is. It's just this hot wire right here touching that. So that gets hot to the hot wires coming out of this box. Then you've got your two wires, green and blue, going to the motor. And then you've got your three position switch that I have lots of these that I've salvaged and I got the quick connectors here and you can see they're color coded too and they come out of the, the back of this box um, down here they come out of the box like that so and they're in a three and they'll always be in you know held together with something and there'll be three of them going to the switch with a quick connect so you hook up your switch you hook up your two motor wires and then you hook hot and in this case the negative you can see the negative hopefully coming out of the back of the box it goes right to a ground and you can ground that you know anywhere there's a ground you can ground it so you got your two hots going to a hot hot wire in this case the wire that comes in from the battery you've got your ground going to going to earth on the block then you've got your two motors, uh, wires going to your motor, the tilt motor itself, and that's it. And everything's in a nice little compact box, and I got the lid off of it, and you can see all the wire is essentially done for you there. So that's why I do it this way. And then I take my switch, and I got it hooked to my battery. There's down. Here's up. There's up. There's my down. So that's how I do it. Now, another reason why I like using those boxes. I show you. I show you. Okay. Is because. This is the lid to that little box. If you look on the back of the lid, there's the diagram that shows you the wires and how they go and what they're for. And that makes it pretty simple. So, um, there is also this same diagram is in almost any and every OMC Evan Rube Johnson uh, manual for your engine manual. It, that will be in the back in the electric ses, uh, section. There will be that diagram. But it's right on the back of this box. And so essentially what you're doing, you have to go through a solenoid or a relay. A relay is just a two-way solenoid in this case. You have to go through that because of amperage. If you try and do it straight to the motor, you, you can do it if you keep the run really short um, from the electric motor to the switch. And, and if you use thick enough and heavy enough wire, you can go straight into a switch. But because of the amperage, a byproduct of that current is thermal, is heat. So they use these little solenoids that way you can run all these different wires for the both up and down 
and not have to deal with the heat, um, the amperage. So, and on these little OMC relays, and you can, there's the part number right there, but you can go to AutoZone and get this very same setup much cheaper than the Evinrude. And they've also got a little diagram on there. And it's a diagram that shows you the 85, the 87, the 87A. It shows you where to hook those wires that are in that box. And like I said, you can buy this in a generic um, relay at most good auto parts store you want to make sure it's a five pin and or you can buy the Evan Rube Johnson but I have a lot of them I save them off of uh, old junker motors anything that comes in here that's been down to she Davy Jones or whatnot um, they are good and sealed and potted and so forth and so I just save them and I save the whole box as a unit like that most of the time because I've done it so many times it makes it real simplistic and hooking up a, a, a tilt switch. So that's the skinny on that. So we've got it all going up and down and everything. And so all I have to do is, is hook it how I want it, where I want it. And I don't know if I mentioned it in an earlier video, but where I'm going with this motor is I want to have it set up to where I could use it on just about any boat that is set up with a remote type steering and helm station so that I can just run my wires up there even put the the control box and everything right over the back of the boat and then I want to make some kind of C clamp things on this unit with some angled aluminum or whatever so I could just set it on a boat C-clamp the shifter on there, have my little tilt trim box and my throttles right there all in one unit. That's what I'm hoping to do with this this engine. And uh, so that's where we're going. But, you know, try and solder your connections together so that you don't deal with that. But as I was doing this job here, I want to show you what I found. And this can't stay that way. And I've always wondered about these. Um, yeah, I'm going to show you. Let me get a better angle. That do it. I'll lift you up a little more, and that'll be about right. Okay. You see these? Not just in Mercury's, but you see them on a lot of outboards. These little rubber caps. Now you see, there ain't no rubber cap here, there ain't no rubber cap here. But, here you've got these little rubber cover your wire things. Now I want you to look under here. Look at that. Can you see that? They're just solid corrosion. And it don't matter which one you pull off. See that? So I'll have to, what I'll do is pull each one of these rubber caps back, take a socket, undo that, wire, brush that, and uh, I've often, on some motors I have taken them off, the little rubber caps. I think they do more harm than good. I like to be able to see my connections and clean them. You know, when you look at these connections down here, all they had was this big old plastic cover that goes over this thing. And they're not all yucked up like that. But those that are under these rubber tabs, they all, look at that. Every one of them, I don't care which one you go to, they'll, they'll be just totally broken. Oops. So I'm going to have to take all those off one at a time, get my little brass wire brush, and clean up every one of those because that's just what I call click waiting to happen. When you turn the key, click, click. So it don't matter whether it's for the tilt, click, click, or whether it's for whatever. It's, you know, I just don't allow that kind of 
stuff on my outboard. So I'll, I'll dress those up, clean them all up, get some dielectric on them and everything after I get them all clean. So, can't be having that in your motor on a stand. I'll be back. Well, it had to come. The white stuff showed up. Just a dusting, I guess, not much. Not enough to have to plow. Two years ago, every one of those outboards right there was completely buried in snow. You couldn't see the tops of them. There's the twin Johnnies. I thought I heard some cussing out here. Old Fret, the weather frog, the one I pissed off Alaskan porch weather frog he be some cussing Fred it's a gorgeous day out today just beautiful
Just a beautiful day. Mm, yeah. Water's nice and calm. Sun shining. Just a beautiful winter day. See the mountains off back in the distance there? Yeah. That's the north end of Woody Island, the closest one, and then the furthest one out there is Long Island. There comes a little fishing boat in. Just a beautiful winter's day here on the island. Okay, um, you can see I went through all these connections and cleaned all that crud up off of there um, as best as I could I just took a little brass brush like this I've got no batteries hooked to this and get up under there and just get as much as I can off of these things and make them shiny brass some of these ones down here were real bad so just clean that yuck off of there and uh, then what I'm going to do time to get me a new brush um, I'm going to take a little bit of dielectric and I'm just going to take me a little acid brush and just put a little on there put me a daub up there and just wipe a little I mean a thin layer of this stuff on these and hopefully that'll help somewhat and keep them from corroding up so bad with these rubber caps on there. That salt and stuff gets under there. Just about ruins them. All right. Okay, I took that uh, my new relay junction box for the tilt and I put it right here. This is it. I just placed it on top of the other one. I've got my ground wire run up to here and that holds it kind of in there and then I've got my other wires coming down here and that holds it there and uh, and everything tucks in pretty good and it should I should be able to clear the hood and all that and then I took my actual tilt trim motor wires the blue and the green one and I came around up under the bottom here and right up through here so they're coming out that hole over there on the other side and so everything tucks in pretty good I'll be back
There we go. Hey, you know that feeling you get, you know, when you open that brand new pack and put on that fresh, never worn pair of socks? That's a good feeling. Kind of like, you know, when you open a brand new bar of soap. That's a good feeling. You know what? I get that same feeling when I open. I show you. I show you. I like it when I open that box. That brand new box. And I get that. Oh, ain't it pretty? says inspected tells you what uh, thrust washers and nuts and keeper to use I have that ain't that pretty this one is if I'm, I'm going by memory here when I ordered it but it's a 13.5 by 15 because I wanted something that had a little more torque to it because I really don't know what this motor is going to be used on you understand so let's slide this thing on there okay I got my thrust washer on there I got everything all geased up good And we got the keeper that goes on there. It looks like that. Those lugs fit down in there into the uh, props deals. Then we got this beautiful brass nut that I took over on my wire wheel. Shined it all up pretty. And then that goes on. Yeah. And we'll get this tightened all up and locked. But don't that look pretty like that? Yeah. It's looking pretty good. Well, there she is. The Mercury 70 with an Evan Rood tilt trim setup and it is about ready to find a boat Well, I got some ideas for a boat. Um, given with what I started, I think it came out really nice. Definitely acceptable. Um, if you go back and peruse those first few videos, you'll see what I'm talking about. It was a mess. That, that is a nice outboard. I do believe Mercarude Johnny Tech I don't know Ikari
So, I'd like to uh, be able to test run this thing for you and all, although I had it running in my tank um, right after we got done with the Cabarrepas, but uh, I can't do that because the last three days around here it's been getting down to about 10 degrees so I couldn't put it outside on a hose because I had to disconnect my hose and drain it because it was getting down to about 10 so it's supposed to warm up in a couple days though well the beginning of next week it's supposed to warm up but uh, I've got some ideas on a boat to at least test run this thing on hopefully I can do that and uh, but she runs really nice, uh, idles well, and uh, so I can't do nothing for the next two or three days because we are supposed to have a blizzard come across the island. It's supposed to last about three days, blowing snow, uh, supposed to get around eight to ten inches just tonight, and then it trickles the next couple days, and they're saying gale force winds 45 to 55 miles an hour. So I ain't going to get out in that and play, you understand. So, she came out pretty nice. And that's going to be a wrap on this Mercury until we can get it on the back of the boat or at least get it out here and hook it to a hose and whatnot and go through the shifting. Um, total gamble on the propeller. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. I did not have one in my bone pile worth a toot. And so that is the only real money I have spent on this outboard was buying that propeller from, uh, it's a soulless propeller, aluminum. And uh, so sometimes you got to roll them dice. So I'm praying that when we get out there on the water with it, uh, you don't jump out of gear or nothing. That would be horrible. But hopefully the aluminum prop if you remember the shape it was in hopefully it took the the uh, majority of the beating and not the the steel gears in there so um i did check the lower unit oil when we changed it and all and it looks good i didn't see no real big chunks on the magnet or anything just a little just a little typical you know dust like stuff that i, I commonly see on those magnets so i'm hoping everything's going to check out and um this one's getting a little long, so I hope you enjoyed the come along with the Mercury. Don't know what I'm going to start next. I got some ideas. Um, I've got that little 1949 Johnson would be fun to do a refurb on that. I have those twin Johnny 30s out there. I'd like to take one of them and put an electric start, a charging... Uh, lighter coil, everything under there for charging a battery, a rectifier, and so forth, and do it up real nice. Um, that would be fun. And there was one other one I was... Oh, my Spirit, the Spirit outboard. Um, that one's going to need a refurb. That one's uncommon enough in my parts that I want to really do a good job on that one and keep that one around for me. So... That's going to be a wrap on this one. And as always, that is one more hack from the Kodiak. And thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.